Hello there, Kendra Bros, and welcome back to World of Rucraft. I am your loyal lore master, Roo, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to episode number 43. Wow, that's a lot of videos. Hang on. No interruptions this time? Well, since Boomer is taking another day off, it seems that it's just you and me this time. Again, this is usually the time someone pops in to interrupt me. Well, so let's take a closer look on today's zone. Tenaris. Unlike our last couple of videos, I'm able to give you a little bit more backstory today. The desert known today as the Tenaris Desert was once a giant jungle and part of the Gurubashi Empire. Wow, we haven't talked about those guys in a while, I hope you remember them. The lush and green landscape quickly changed after the Great Sundering and a small tribe of trolls, called the Faraki, settled down there. And over time, they transformed into the so-called Sand Trolls. But wait. There is more to talk about. The bronze dragonfly, the host of the timekeeper Nozdormu, has its ancestral home in the Caverns of Time in Tenaris. We will talk more about the Caverns of Time once we reach its Dungeon Diary entry. Yes, what a smooth plug. What I can tell you now is that Nozdormu's child, Anachronos, discovered the evil sylphid bug race in Tenaris and his discovery eventually led to the War of Shifting Sands. But wait, there is even more. Jugal and his Twilight Hammer Cult hid in Tenaris during the Second War, but they quickly abandoned the hideout after a lot of their members were killed by Garona Hellforce. And even that isn't all. The Steam Wheel Cartel built its capital, Gadgetson, in the desert and used its proximity to the ocean to build the Steam Wheel Port. Phew, that's pretty much everything that happened there prior to the Cataclysm. Oh no, wait! I forgot to mention that the Scorch invaded the area during the years leading up to the Third War. Oh, Artus, I missed you so much. Uh, now back on track. Tenaris was another zone heavily impacted by the Cataclysm. Deathring's return caused huge parts of the desert to be flooded. The Steam Needle port was also flooded, and thanks to the new coastline, Gadgetson became a port. What else is there to tell you? You can find the dungeon Sul Farag in Tenaris and also get to the newly discovered zone Uldum from there. Great, that pretty much covers the backstory and lore. So why don't we check out the zone ourselves? Come on, let's go! Our first stop is going to be the earlier mentioned Goblin Town of Gadgetson. Goblin Town, eh? That means we're about to do some crazy stuff again. At least I hope so. Our green friends tell us that they want to establish Gadgetson as a big trading hub, but there is one problem. The South Sea Pirates are blocking off the port. You know what that means? We have to deal with them. Not only do we get to bomb them from an air balloon, we also head to the headquarter, the Lost Riga Cove. And what's the best way to get rid of pirates? Burn down the houses, steal their treasure and kill their captain. And since we're already there, why don't we steal the gold teeth fillings from their corpses? Okay, that may be a little bit too dark. Let's not do that. We are also asked to help out collecting some animal parts with this neat little butcher bot. He's a quirky little fella, and I just wanted to mention him. That's all. We eventually end up at the Sand Sour Watch, where we meet the Sand Fury trader Matsoka. He wants to help us find the legendary sword Sul Frazi, a great sword compiled of the sword Sang Frazi and Jang Frazi. Well, that's awfully nice of him. All we need to do is to get him fists full of troll blood. Yummy. A vision had by Matsoka points us into the direction of the air elemental Sakaru, and defeating him rewards us with Sang Frazi. That's a lot of names I'm too stupid to pronounce right. Now, we are only one step away from putting Sul Frazi back together. Matsoka sends us to a lonely waterhole to retrieve Jang Frazi. But it turns out that Matsoka had Jang Frazi all along and already restored Sul Frazi. That's the second time I've been betrayed by a troll. I should really stop trusting these guys. Even though Matsoka is trying to kill us, we are successful in fighting him off and he flees back to Sul Farak. Well, all that work was basically for nothing. So let's do something with more impact. Let's check out the bootlegger outpost. This camp is close to the gaping chasm, the home turf of a swarm of silifids. So guess who we are going to fight next? We warm up by killing some of those buggers and rescue a group of not so successful bug hunters. To deal with the silifids for good, we come up with a genius plan. We catch one of the bugs and mind control it to sniff out the silifid's hive and blow it to pieces. Oh, I'm sure Boomer would have loved this. 
up to this point, all the quests we did were the same for the Horde and the Alliance, but I wouldn't be mentioning this if this wasn't going to change. For the time being, our Alliance friend is heading to the lands and beach. Remember how the goblins fled Kazan after Deathwing caused the giant volcano there to erupt? Well, we find a shipwrecked vessel from that escape, including a group of crazed goblin survivors. Why did they go mad? They thought that they landed on an uncharted island. I guess it's too late to tell them that they are just a stone throw away from Gadgetson. Well, we have no other choice but to kill them then. Speaking of crazy goblins, what is our goblin friend up to? He arrived at the Dune Mall recruitment camp. Our task here is to recruit the local Dune Mall ogres to the Horde. Who would have thought? How are we going to accomplish that? We disguise ourselves as an ogre and gather some signatures from the Dune Malls. To sweeten the deal, we also acquire some silicate bits and give them out to our new friends. And last but not least, we can check out the South Moon Ruins, this time with both our characters again. We have to investigate the ruins to find hieroglyphs and to fight back the rival archaeologists from the opposing faction. This leads us to a mysterious chamber and an even more mysterious chest. We fight against the chest's guardian and receive a tablet in return. This mysterious tablet appears to be linked to the titans, but the game leaves us on the cliffhanger. I know, I'm as disappointed as you are, even more so since this is all we can do in Teneris. No wait, I forgot something again. If you want to prove your battle prowess, you can check out the Thunderdome in Gadgetson. Not only do you get to fight a giant and a ridiculous huge troll, you also get to fight a giant scorpion monster. Man, that's a lot of giants. And that's pretty much all it is to tell about Teneris. So why don't we return to our airship for the outro? Huh, it was kind of weird doing the whole video by myself. Reminded me of the old days. But I'm pretty sure Boomer is going to be back next week. He will join us in our next adventure in Silithus. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. Damn, I haven't used that outro in a while. Sorry, old habits. Captain Lunk, set course for Silifus.